Yo, B7, hey, welcome back to B7 TV. We're ecstatic that you're here. Moreover, we're excited for a new series that we're beginning called Do It Yourself. And this series is one that I wanna challenge you as your leader, as your student pastor, that you, over the next four weeks, would zoom in and hear the word of God. The Bible says that you have to hear it, and once you hear it, you have to act upon it. Well, if you don't make space to hear it, you can't act. And so this is the year that we are leveling up and we're gonna do it ourselves. So what do you need to watch this? What do you need to engage? You need your Bible, okay? You need something to take notes with, whether it's a notebook or if it's something to capture note with. You, you should text a friend and let them know that you're watching so they can join it. You can post, you should at some point like this message or subscribe so you can get more of it. Moreover, you should get your heart ready. Now, if you're a snacker, I'm a snacker, you can bring those snacks and jump in so stay tuned for the next part of do it yourself god bless you hey what's up b7 it is beverly here and we're in the middle of a series or we're in this series called d i y otherwise known as do it yourself right we always want to do things ourselves. We sometimes don't like doing things with other people, but in this series, we're going to learn what does it mean to do things ourselves, especially with the Lord, right? And so in this series, we got a series definition and I want to read it so that I make sure I get it right, right? So here's the definition for do it yourself. It's our ability to boldly live out our Christian faith. And this happens only not sometimes, not other times, but only by stepping out on trusting and trying what we profess to believe without direct aid from anyone, not everyone, but from anyone other than God, right? And so we want to make sure that when we're living out our faith boldly, that we're taking a step, trusting the Lord with everything that we have and everyone that we, uh, everything that we know ourselves to be, and the Lord works with us, right? We get aid from him. He desires to help us, right? And in in all of that, we also have a, a, a verse for us to live by as well, right? And it's from Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, from the New King James Version, and it reads, They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And you might be wondering, well, Beverly, what does any of this mean? What does all of this mean? Well, let me explain to you what I think it means, right, for us. It means that that we get to live our life boldly for Christ. And you, me, the people next to you, everybody has a story to tell, right? And with our stories, we can help other people come into relationship with Jesus Christ and overcome their sin, their hardships, their, their hard things of life, all because we decided that we wanted to live our lives boldly for Christ, right? And so we're about to meet a man who does just this. He lives out his life boldly for God. And in turn, an entire generation of people get an opportunity to experience freedom. And that man, you might know him by the name of Moses, right? By the name of Moses. Moses is this great prophet who led the people of Israel out of Egypt by the help of God's hand. And in doing so, uh, we also get an opportunity to see what happens after the Israelites uh, get into uh, the promised land, or not the promised land, but get into uh, the desert and they're waiting for God to get into the promised land, right? And so Moses is trying to help the Israelites get to the next thing, but he kind of has to do it alone. So we're going to be in Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12. So let me read this for us. And it says this, Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and I have found favor in my sight. 
Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, this is God speaking. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I uh, and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? Verse 17. And the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do for you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. Isn't it good to be known by God by name? And Moses said, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show mercy to whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and Lord, we just thank you that you give us an opportunity to do it ourselves, God, that we get to do it not just by ourselves, but with you by ourselves. We don't need other people to do the things you've called us to do. So as we get ready to go deeper into this word, into what you've provided for us, Lord, I pray that your people's hearts would be open to receive all the things that you have for them. So let this word be a marking word in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen, amen. So for me growing up, I kind of was not, a, I wasn't a loner, but uh, for me, I found myself numerous times in spaces where I was by myself, right? So uh, when I was a little bit younger, being in spaces by myself, uh, you get this mentality of, well, maybe I don't need people. And here's the thing. I didn't immediately get to that thought process. It started off with, God, why don't I have people around me? Why don't I have people who want to do things with me or hang out with me or learn the Bible with me? Why don't I have that with me? Right. And uh, for a time being, that time was very hard for me to navigate through. Like it was it was really difficult to grow in faith and grow in my understanding of who God is by myself. Right. But I was reminded that even if I do it myself, that I don't have to do it alone, which is the name of my message today is don't do it alone or you'll do it alone because it can work both ways. But in all of that, I kind of sat and thought for years. So this wasn't a one time moment. This wasn't a one time thing or this happened every once in a while for years. I had to walk out my faith alone. I didn't have friends who, who were committed to Jesus like I was committed. I didn't have people in my corner who could sit beside me and walk through life with me like I have now. And honestly, to tell the complete truth, it's just recently within the last few years where I've actually had a community of people who would walk with me through my faith walk and, and we would have conversations about what it is that God was calling any of us to do. And so doing it alone or doing it by myself, it became my normal thing. It became what I knew how to do. And then I learned along the way that doing it alone, doing it myself was not a bad thing. Cause there are some times that God wants to draw you closer into relationship with him. And it's hard to do. It's hard to navigate through. But we see with Moses that he's getting ready to take the Israelites, right? He has the Israelites, his people with him. And he, God's giving him a command. He's sitting on a mountain and God gives him a command. He's like, hey, I need you to go talk to the people. I need you to go tell the people what I just said, right? Because we always do what God says, right? So he's saying, I need you to do what I say. And Moses is saying, but who are you going to send with me? Like, who, who's going with me? And God's saying, I'm not sending nobody with you. Like what? I don't have to send anybody with you. You can do this alone. 
You don't need other people to do this. And in turn, God says, you know what? But I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help. I'm going to help you out, Moses. You're going to do it alone, but I'm going to go with you. My presence is going to go before you. But I want you to know something. I want you to to recognize this point that even though that we can tend to do things alone. Right. Point number one, God tells us that aloneness is unavoidable. Right. Aloneness is unavoidable. And so we see in Exodus chapter 33, verse 12, it says, Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. So Moses is asking this question. You, you told me the instruction. You told me what I needed to do, right? You're telling me all the things that I need to do, but you have not told me yet who's going to go with me, right? And I want us to know this, which is that many of us have convinced ourselves, right? We've convinced ourselves that, okay, well, if God's not going to send anybody with me, like, then I don't need anybody. I don't need community. I don't need people to ride with me. I, I can do all of this by myself. And we have convinced ourselves that doing things alone really means doing things alone. And God's saying, no, 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 no. When I say do things alone, I mean me and you. So you're not really by yourself. I want you to do this with me. Why? Because if I send other people with you, you might get a little distracted. If I send someone with you, you might miss the plans that I have for you. If I send somebody else with you, you're going to get so distracted by that person or that thing that you'll completely miss the fact that I had a a plan for you to fulfill that you decided wasn't even important because the person was more important than the plan. Right. Because sometimes. That's the truth. Sometimes that's how we see things. We see the people are more important than the plans. And God's like, no, I'm not sending anybody with you because you're going to get too distracted. Think about it for a second. You're in class or you're hanging out with people or you're talking to people and you, you got to get a project done and you end up with your friends doing that project. How much of that time are you actually spending on the project versus the time you're actually hanging out with that person? See, God knows. God is well aware of what our tendencies are. He's well aware that we we will say that we'll be good and that we're doing all the things that God sent for us to do. But when he rolls the camera back and he says, no, I need you to come see what I see. We recognize that, whoa, I've wasted time. I'm not doing the things that God has set out for me to do. Right. And so God is trying to tell Moses in this moment, I'm going to go with you. My presence is going to go before you. Right. And so many of us, we see some aspects of our walk. Right. And as we're looking at different aspects of our walk, we want to do them with other people. And God wants to spend time with you. And he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that he spends one on one time with you. Not because that's just what he does, but because he genuinely enjoys all of his creation. There's not one creation that God does not enjoy spending time with. He will never make you feel like you don't belong in the room. He'll never make you feel like your presence is not necessary. He's always going to make time for his creation. But in order for him to spend time with his creation, he has to make sure that his creation is not distracted. And so we see with Moses that he's trying to express to them and trying to explain to him, hey, I want to spend some time with you. I want to talk to you. I want to show you all the things that I have for you. And that can only be attainable if you spend time with me. So I want you to know that aloneness is unavoidable, not because he wants you to be alone, but because he wants to spend time with you, right? And so we later on see in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 14, it's, um, we see that Moses is 
getting this response back from God and he's saying, hey, I, I, I am going to go before you. But see, you haven't recognized and you haven't seen that I'm already going before you. Right. And so we can feel in these moments that when God isn't going before us or if we ever feel like God's not with us, we can feel that there's distance. And for those of you who are feeling a little bit of distance from God, because you're like, God, you said you'd go before me, but I don't see you and I don't feel you. I don't sense you. I want to remind you of something that sometimes distance happens, right? Point number two, distance happens. And when distance happens between you and God, I want to remind you that it's never instantaneous. It's never instant. If there's distance between you and God, it is simply because it happened gradually. So there wasn't one moment where you went, Okay, God, I'm done with it. I'm just going to stop thinking about God. No, you may have been always thinking about God, but you haven't been spending time with him. And so you can feel like there's drifting happening. But I want to also let you know this, that if you feel like there is distance between you and God, it's not because of your mistakes that cause the distance. It's your unrepentant heart that causes the distance. Have you asked God for forgiveness for your sins? When you've noticed that you've been distant from him, have you apologized that you haven't made time for him? Or are you just hoping that, okay, God, well, you know, I've been distant, so now I'm back in it. What is your heart saying? What is your heart supposed to be doing in this moment? The reality is, is you can make mistakes and your mistakes will never cause you to drift away from the Lord. But when you are unrepentant about how you, how you've treated God, that's going to bring forth distance between you and him. And so we see in the scriptures, we see this happen uh, in Genesis chapter three, right? In Genesis chapter three, verse 12, Adam and Eve, they have just eaten the fruit, right? Just ate the fruit off of the tree. And Adam makes this statement, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. So even in this moment, Adam completely takes the blame off of him and puts it on the woman. And because he puts this blame on the woman, God ends up responding in verse 23 by saying, Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and the flaming sword sword that turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So what happens when we are unrepentant? It creates distance. God desires close proximity to you. And one of the ways he does that is by saying, I'm going to go before you. But when you don't sense him and when you don't feel him, sometimes that's because our hearts just will not be repentant. We will not ask God for forgiveness. We will not turn away from our evil and wicked ways. And we will place blame on other people and other things. Well, God, I had a lot of homework. That's why I didn't get my my Bible reading done. God, I've been going to church. Like, don't you see me going to church? Yeah, but you ain't prayed yet. You're not praying. You're not reading. So how are you supposed to know who God is if you're not spending time with him? Right. So distance happens and it doesn't happen uh, instantaneously. It happens gradually. Right. And so if that's you, I want you to take a look at your own life. And I need you to own up. Own up to the fact that you haven't done your part, because here's the thing. God never moves. God's always going to be in the same place you left him. But if every time something goes wrong or it doesn't go the way you want it to go, you end up saying, well, God forgot about me. God does not forget about his creation. He does not forget about his people. So I want you to remember that if there's distance, check your heart. Have you been repentant? Are you asking the Lord for forgiveness? What are you doing? And so we see 
in the scriptures that God reminds uh, Moses, my presence will go before you, which means that my presence is already here. And I want you to know that his presence is always here. And because he's always here, I want you to remind you for point number three, that closeness is attainable. It reminds me of James chapter four, verse eight, which says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Are you coming near to God? Are you actually making the effort to spend time with God? Or are you hoping that as long as you are in proximity to the God things in life, that'll get you close enough? Being in proximity to things that resemble God is not the same thing as being in close proximity to God and being with God. Closeness is available to you, but it is only available if you put in the work to actually spend time. Just like with your friends, your friends don't become your friends simply because y'all happen to be in the same space at the same time all the time. Part of that, there is a moment where you have to say to yourself, I'm going to make an effort to be friends with this person. I'm going to do things to ensure that I'm friends with them, right? And so God doesn't move. And relationships are only built if both parties involved put forth the effort, which is why James says, when you come near to God, God is also going to come near to you. So in our mind, sometimes we can look at that and we can think that God's just standing here and then we're here and we're moving. No, how that really works is we're both moving together, right? And so it's very important for us to always remember that God desires to be close with his people and closeness is attainable. And so because closeness is attainable, there's a few ways that we can ensure that we, be, we begin to get close with the Lord, right? And that's point number four, which is prayer is necessary. I don't care what anybody says to you. I can tell you and guarantee you scripture supports this, but the best way to get close to God is through prayer. Without prayer, without actually having a conversation with him, how can you say that you're close to someone without talking to them? How can you say that you're close to someone without spending time with them, right? So we're talking about doing it alone, right? We're talking about doing it ourselves. All of these things are about us putting in the work to make sure that we're spending time with the one, right? If we're spending time with the one, that also means that our prayer time has to reflect that we've spent time with them, right? We see in Exodus chapter 34, verse 33 through 35, it says, uh, and when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. And whenever Moses went before him, went before the Lord to speak to him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses's face was shining. And Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went to speak with him. Question for you. Do you look like you've spent time with God? Does your face reflect the presence of God? I'm not talking about your cute little prayers. God, please help me today. Lord, thank you, Jesus. We're so good. So great. I'm not talking about that. Have you legitimately spent time? You've closed your door. You've turned off all of the notifi notifications. You've spent time with them. And I'm talking more than 10 minutes. I'm talking around, let's say, tw I'll give you 20 to 30 minutes where you dedicated some time with them. Do you look like you've spent time with them? You know, it's very interesting is that in the scriptures, uh, we're called the the like we can resemble light. Right. When people look at us, we can resemble light. But what's very interesting about that is that the world knows what light looks like, too. Now, they might give it another name. They might give it. It's a vibe. It's your aura. It's it's all of those things. Right. But they're talking about your light. 
And do people see that are around you, do they see that light? I don't care what other name they give it. Do they see the light of Christ on your face? Do you look like you've actually spent time with God? Prayer brings us into intimacy with the Father. So what good is it if you do things alone and you walk all of this out alone, but you don't look like you've spent time with him? What good is it for you to tell people, oh, I can just do church by myself. I don't need to go with a group of people if you still don't look like him. What good? What, what does it matter, right? Spending time with him and all of these things and doing it alone means doing it alone with him so that you can look like you've spent time with him. And not for the sake of just looking like you've spent time with him, but you look like him because you're also trying to bring people into relationship with him. Why would I want to look like somebody who doesn't want to even do the thing that they're looking like, right? So how do you spend time with God? How do you spend alone time with the Savior? Is he even that to you? Is he the Savior of your life? What does that look like for you? When people are talking to you, does your speech sound like you've spent time with him? Or does it sound like the music you listen to? Or does it sound like the TV shows you watch? Or does it sound like your friends, right? Because we all know you spend enough time with your friends, you're gonna start sounding like them, right? So why can you not do the same for the Lord? So I wanna encourage you in this season, I wanna encourage you right now that not only do we do things ourselves, we walk out our faith ourselves, but we also do it alone, but we don't just do it alone like me by myself, I do it alone with the Lord. Right. So I want to encourage you that it's not enough to just say that you do it alone, but that you are led by the Lord and you're led by the Holy Spirit to walk out the, the promises of God through the things that you do by spending time with him, by looking like you're veiled, looking like you've spent time in the presence of the Lord. I want to pray for you and I want to encourage you so let me pray dear Heavenly Father we thank you so much for giving us this word and we thank you so much for giving us the ability to take inventory of the fact that we don't have to be alone but there are times that we have to do it alone and even when I do it alone it's you who go before me it's you who stands before me so Father, we thank you. We thank you for even when there's distance, that you bring us even closer. And so Father, I pray that each and every person who's watching this and listening to this, that they draw nearer to you so that you can draw nearer to them. Lord, we thank you for this and all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I wanna say thank you for watching us today. And I hope this message blessed you. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends about it. We cannot wait to see you again. So I'll see you guys later. Hey, B7. Thank you so much for watching today. And, you know, I want to remind you, I want to give you this one last thought, which is you don't have to do it alone. And even when you do feel like you're doing it alone, and by it, I do mean walking out with the Lord and, and trying to figure out your faith in this time. I want to remind you that you're not really alone. You know, you have the Lord and the Lord goes before you, you know, and sometimes it can feel like you're doing these things and there's nobody to come alongside you. But hopefully what happens to you is what happens to what happened to me, which is that the Lord brought people eventually to me but there's going to be a period of time where people won't be next to you to get things accomplished for the lord and so that's okay so don't ever feel like 
you're going to always be alone or that nobody's ever going to be with you. The reality is, is that sometimes the Lord brings us uh, into isolating seasons because he desires to get to know you more so one on one. Right. And so I want to encourage you and let you know that if you feel a little lonely in the season, if you feel like, man, I really just I, it's hard doing this by myself without other people even though I know that God goes before me and he's with me. I want to let you know that there are leaders available. You can always get prayer and we're always available to you, right? And so you can always email us at b7students.tv and or you can DM us on either all of our uh, social media outlets, whether that's Instagram or Facebook. And so I want you to know that you can always reach out to us and you can always let us know and we'll always pray with you so don't be afraid to to reach out to us and we want to see you soon so thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon <laughs>